This is a tutorial on the binomial theorem and combinations. The first thing we're going to talk about in this tutorial are combinations. Combinations are a collection of R objects selected from a larger group of N objects. So we want to know how many different combinations of R objects out of N objects. An example of this would be being dealt a hand of five cards. If I was dealt the Ace of Spades, the Jack of Spades, the Nine of Spades, Seven of Spades, and the Five of Spades, I would have the same poker hand as if I had been dealt the Jack of Spades, Nine of Spades, Ace of Spades, Five of Spades, and Seven of Spades. To me, the order in which the cards are given to me does not affect the value of the hand that I've been dealt. That's because these two hands are considered the same combination. So combinations, if you've studied permutations, are just like permutations, except the order doesn't matter. Now if we wanted to calculate how many different combinations of R objects out of N objects selected, we could use this formula. N choose R is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial. Now if you're not familiar with the factorial sign, this exclamation point, if you were told to find 7 factorial, well 7 factorial that's equal to 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. If you were told to find 4 factorial, you would take 4 and you would multiply it by 3 and then by 2 and then by 1. So whatever number is followed by the exclamation point or the factorial symbol, that just means you take that number and you multiply it by every integer that's less than that number all the way down to 1. A special rule for factorials, if you ever see 0 factorial, that's always equal to 1. Now let's try an example of trying to find a combination, or different amounts of combinations. Let's try to find how many different hands of cards can be dealt from a standard deck of cards. Now let's assume our standard deck of cards has 52 different cards in it. And let's say our hand of cards is 5 cards. So we want to know how many different combinations of 5 cards can we get out of a standard deck of 52. So that means that our n is 52 and we're going to choose our value or 5 out of that 52. So we're going to plug in 52 for n and 5 for r into this equation. This is equal to 52 factorial over n minus r, so 52 minus 5 factorial multiplied by 5 factorial. If we simplify this subtraction, this is the same as 52 factorial over 47 factorial times 5 factorial. Now 52 factorial, that's 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 times 47, times 46, times 45, and so on, all the way down to 1. This is a huge number. This would take forever to calculate out by hand. But we don't actually have to calculate that entire quantity out. Notice that we're going to be dividing this by 47 factorial and 5 factorial. Well, for right now, let's forget about this 5 factorial. We'll come back to that. Let's just focus on this 47 factorial. This is another huge number. We're going to be dividing 52 factorial by 47 times 46 times 45 times 44 and so on all the way down to 1. Well, if I have a 47 in the numerator and a 47 in the denominator, that means I'm taking 47 and I'm dividing by 47. 47 divided by 47 is 1, so these terms are going to cancel. The same thing is going to happen with the 46 and the 45 and the 44, 43, 42, 41, all the way down to 1. All of those numbers occur 
in both our numerator and our denominator. So they're all going to cancel out. And all we're going to be left with is 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48. And this, don't forget, is still divided by 5 factorial. So it's divided by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now our numerator, if we do this multiplication, 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48, that's equal to 311,875,200. Our denominator, 5 times 4, that's 20, times 3 is 60, times 2 is 120, and times 1 is still 120. So we have 311,875,200 divided by 120. That's equal to 2,598,960. That means that there are 2,598,960 different possible combinations of five cards that can be dealt out of a standard deck of 52. Now sometimes finding combinations are a little bit more difficult than that. Sometimes we have what we call multiple events. Here we're told that Tom and Jen decide to rent a movie. Jen wants to rent a comedy, but Tom wants to rent an action movie. So instead, they decide to each rent their own movie. The rental kiosk that they go to has 16 comedies, 10 action movies, and 14 dramas. So how many different combinations of two movies can they rent if they both get the type of movie that they want? Well, we say that this is multiple events because Tom is going to rent a movie and then Jen is going to rent a movie. Tom is going to choose one movie out of ten action movies. So the different combinations of Tom choosing a movie would be ten choose one. Now Jen's going to decide to rent her own movie and she's going to choose one movie out of a possible sixteen comedies. So Jen's combination of movies would be sixteen choose one. Well, what we're asked for is how many different combinations of the two movies that they're both going to rent. Now, the movie that Tom rents is limited to the action movies, and the movie that Jen rents is limited to the 16 comedies. So the total different combinations of the two movies would be their different combinations multiplied together. If you're familiar with the fundamental counting principle, you know when you have two different choices, you can take all the different possibilities of each choice and multiply them together. And that's the same thing that's going on here. Now we just have to solve for 10 choose 1 and 16 choose 1. If you plug that into our formula, ncr is equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. For Tom's choice, this is 10 factorial over 10 minus 1 factorial times 1 factorial. And if you calculate this out, this is equal to 10. So there are 10 different possible combinations of choosing one item out of 10. If you do the same calculation for Jen's choice, well, there are 16 different ways she can choose one movie out of 16 movies. 10 times 16 is 160. So there are 160 different combinations of Tom running an action movie and Jen running a comedy. So remember, whenever you have multiple events, you take the different options and you multiply them together. But what if I said, since they wanted to rent different movies, they would together just rent, at most, four movies. Well, remember, there's 10 action movies, there's 16 comedies, and there's also 14 dramas. So there's a total of 40 movies to choose from. But if they rent, at most, four movies, that means they may rent four movies, or they may rent three, or two, or one or possibly they would rent zero movies. Since the choice includes choosing 
movies out of a total of 40 movies, but they also don't know how many movies they're going to rent. Instead of multiplying, we're going to add the different combinations. So we're going to say that out of 40, they may choose 0. And then we're going to add that to out of 40, they may choose 1. And then we're going to add that to out of 40, they may choose 2. And then out of 40, they may choose 3. And then out of 40, they may choose 4. One key way to know that you have to add your different combinations instead of multiplying is when the problem tells you at most or at least. That is a big hint that you're going to be adding your combinations. Now we need to solve for all the different possible combinations of choosing 0 out of 40, 1 out of 40, 2 out of 40, 3 out of 40, and 4 out of 40. Now there's only one way to choose 0 movies out of 40. You just don't choose any movies. There's 40 different ways to choose one movie out of 40. If you calculate the rest of these out, there are 780 ways to choose two movies out of 40. There are 9,880 ways to choose three movies out of 40. And there's 91,390 ways to choose four movies out of 40. If we add all these up, that means there are 102,091 different possible combinations that they can rent at most four movies. So now that we understand combinations, let's talk about the binomial theorem. Before we can understand the binomial theorem, we have to understand Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle is just this triangle we get when we write down all the different possible combinations of choosing different R values out of N possible values. If N is equal to zero, we wanted to choose zero items out of zero items. Or if we wanted to choose zero items out of one or one item out of one. Zero items out of two or one item out of two or two items out of two. Zero out of three, one out of three, two out of three, three out of three, and so on all the way down forever as our N increases. So now let's look at the value of all these different combinations. There's only one way to choose zero items out of zero items. You just don't choose any. There's only one way to choose zero items out of one item, or one item out of one item. As n increases down to two, there's only one way to choose zero items out of two. There's only one way to choose two items out of two, but there's two ways to choose one item out of two and so on and so forth as n increases and our r value increases as we go this way across our triangle. What's also important to notice with Pascal's triangle is if I take the two numbers above it, they add together to get the number between them and below. So here I have one and one. If I add those two values together, I get my two. If I take my one and my two and I add them together, I get my three. My 1 and 3 together give me 4, 1 and 4 together give me 5, 4 and 6 together would give me the 10, 10 and 10 would give me my 20. So that's what's special about Pascal's triangle. You can quickly calculate out the different combinations possible just by writing out Pascal's triangle. Now let's see why Pascal's triangle is important. This is the binomial theorem. If I have x plus y to the nth power, then I can write out the expanded version of this if I do the multiplication n times, and the coefficients on the different terms are just the values of Pascal's triangle. Now notice that my first term is x to the n power and y to the zero power. And as I go down in each consecutive term, 
my x power reduces by one, but my y power increases by one all the way down until I have x to the zero and y to the n power. Now you've done something like this before if you've dealt with quadratic equations. If you had x plus y squared, well then you would say that's equal to x plus y times x plus y, and then you would foil these out to get the expanded version. You would take x times x and you would get your x squared. Then you would take x times y and you would get a yx. Then you'd take y times x and you'd get a second yx, so you'd end up with two yx. And then lastly you would take y times y and you'd end up with y squared. In this case, your n, that was two. So your first term, your x value has a value of two, or n. And your last term, your y value has a value of n, or two. And then in the middle here, we have y to the first power and x to the first power, or n minus one, and then one. Notice the coefficients on this expanded term are one, two, and one. Well, let's go back to Pascal's triangle. Our n was two, and our coefficients were one, two, and one. Well, we didn't need Pascal's triangle to figure that out. That was a simple foil and do a quadratic equation. But what if you had a harder problem? What if we had x minus three to the fifth power? Here our n is five. Our x is still x, but our y then would be this negative three. So we'd have x to the n and then y to the zero, x to the n minus one and then y to the first power, x to the n minus two and then y to the second power and so on and so forth until we get down to x to the zero and y to the fifth power. But notice my coefficients here, one, five, ten, ten, 5 and 1. If we go back to Pascal's triangle, my n was 5, and my coefficients were 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. So that's how you can use Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem to expand out binomials n amounts of time. Instead of continually multiplying again and again and again, you can just use the choose function and count down your exponents. So let's X try this in the y terms. That's the binomial theorem. Let's expand out 3c plus 2 to the fourth power. Here my x is equal to 3c and my y is equal to 2 and my n is equal to 4. What I'm going to end up with is 3c to the fourth power times 2 to the zero power plus 3c to the third power times 2 to the first power plus 3c to the second power times 2 to the second power plus 3c to the first power times 2 to the third power plus 3c to the zero power times two to the fourth power. Now the last well, thing I, I need are the coefficients all the different of these choose terms. functions, or I can go to my Pascal's triangle. My n is four, so my coefficients are going to be one, four, six, four, and one. So I'll have one times this, four times that, six times that, four times that, and one times that. If you simplified all of this out, this would become 81 times c to the fourth power plus 216 times c cubed plus 216 times c squared plus 96 c plus 16. And that's how you use the binomial theorem. And that also completes the tutorial on the binomial theorem and combinations.